with Bristol Stompin' Bonnie, yes. also known as Bandstand Bonnie. Can I call you Bandstand Bonnie or no? Well, you can. Yeah. If you want to. Okay. But most people call me Bristol Stompin' Bonnie now. Okay, I'll say Bristol Stompin' Bonnie. Is that okay with okay, you? Okay, that's great. And and so, how do you know Lois? It seems like everyone knows Lois. Everyone knows Lou Ray Productions. Well, how did it all? How did it all start with that? I know uh, Lois through uh, Facebook. We became Facebook friends, and then I went to one of her productions at the um, Which one? Opera, the Grand Opera, okay. and it was uh, for the veterans, and it was fabulous. And my husband's a veteran. He was um, a Marine in Vietnam, and he uh, enjoyed it so much, and it was uh, really a great production, and she's a wonderful person, and, and we became with, friends. Yeah, that was at the Grand Opera House. That was Grand Kid Opera. Kyle, yes. and uh, what, what a performer Kid yeah. Kyle is. Oh. I can't wait to see that guy I again. Know. He's fabulous. Yeah, and uh, I really love that Lou Costello, man. He does such yes. a great job hosting that thing. Changing the outfits every yeah, time. <laughs> yes, that was great. That yeah. was really great. So back to you. How you, We're going to go back to the very beginning, okay? okay? How did you earn your name, Bandstand Bonnie? Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, I used to dance on Bandstand in 1961. I was not a regular. Um, I just went there as often as I could in 1961. And um, I enjoyed it. And I have a lot of great memories of the times I danced on the show. And one of a DJ that um, was in Philadelphia um, gave me the nickname Bandstand Bonnie. Well, which DJ? It was High Lit Son Sam Lit. And um, I, that one time I was working with him and promoting his dances. And um, someone that was at the dance came in from what I could remember and said, is Bandstand Bonnie there? And he said, I told him about that, and he said, that's a good nickname for you, so that's how he got the name. However, um, I don't use it anymore because, um, to be honest with you, some people find it offensive. Really? In yeah. what way? Because I was not a regular, and they feel I should not have the name Bandstand Bonnie, t you know, as a nickname. So the Dovells, who I am uh, the president of their fan club, um, they gave me another nickname, and it was Bristol Stompin' Bonnie, and I like that better, so that's what I'm being called right okay. now. Oh, whatever. So, you could call so. me whatever you want. Just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> okay, and I and I won't. I don't know if uh, it's late for dinner. Are they going to be here today? If I'm they, <laughs> the late for dinner is a band with my good friend Rick Griffin. So, yeah. So, okay. So, don't get too far ahead of me now, Bonnie. Okay. Okay. Because you're 15 years old and yes. you have the gumption to go on the American Bandstand. Yes, yes. I mean, that's an amazing thing. How did you get to the show that day? Okay. Well, the first time I went was, in, I was 13, and a friend of 13 mine, years yes, old. A friend of mine's father was very good friends with Sam Goody. He used to own record stores in Philadelphia. And they Remember had, Goody's? Yes. And they got us tickets to go on the show, and we went in, and I remember I wanted to look older because I was only 13, and I was stuffing my bra with toilet paper. <laughs> Golly <laughs> gee willikers. <laughs> i trying to look older, and I got in. They didn't question how old I was. You had to be 14. And so that day I went in, and I just sat on the bleachers, and I, I was amazed that everything was in color because I'm so used to seeing things in black and white on our little black right. and white TV sets. And um, we went in, and I had a good time. I just sat on the bleachers, and it was fun, but I was only 13. But then in 1961, I was 15, and one day a friend and, and myself decided to go, and we went, and... The first time we didn't get in, we had to go home because it was long lines and you had to wait for hours to get in. And uh, we waited and we got to the end and Bob, the cop who was in charge of letting kids in, said, that's it, no more. And so we had to go home. We were so upset. But a few weeks later, I went again. And this time I got in. I guess we were there early enough. And, oh, I loved it, and I remember sitting there and dancing and having a great time, and I was on the camera, and I thought to myself, I want to go back. I love this. This is so much fun. So how I started getting back was at the end of the show, somebody would come out. I think it was the director, the producer. I don't remember. I mean, we're going back so many years. I I can't remember ever, you know, everything. I just remember bits and pieces. And... Um, Somebody, he would come over and he would say, you know, who can come to the show next Monday? And I would raise my hand and I would get a 
reservation card. And then with that card, you didn't have to wait in line. You could just walk in. So I would go the following Monday when I got the card and get in and then get another card. And I would go about two, three times a month. It was four. And it was a long ride for me to get there. Two buses. Two, I believe it was two buses and I know the Frankfurt L. Frankfurt Elevator to get to uh, 46 and Market Street where the uh, studio was at that time. For a whole year. I went, but only maybe two, three, maybe times a, a month. And not that much, and I was not a regular. I just went there because I loved to dance. Okay, and that's really, that's, that's an amazing story because 13-year-old, you know, a 15-year-old, I mean, right. it's just really amazing what, what that is. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, Amazing courage, yes. you know what I mean? Well, it Who'd you fun. meet? Give us, give us your best story. Uh, my best story, okay. Um, I remember meeting so many, you know, of the singers and performers that were there. Uh, Danny and the Juniors were there, and they sang a song, Go Go, Cha Cha Go Go. It, it wasn't very popular, but they've, they're known for At the Hop, and Rock and Roll is here to stay. And I'm good friends with Joe Terry and Frank Maffei and Bob Maffei. They're great guys. I just saw them recently. Lois, would you please calm down over there? You're up next. Well, I'm talking to Bandstand Bonnie over here. Don't eat into her time, okay? So, so Lois, can you believe her? So, I love so, her. All right. So, um, now, and, and who else Who else are you involved with? So, you're, oh, you're, okay. you're president of two organizations, right? Okay. Well, did you want to hear anything more about the people I saw? Well, I mean, well yeah, yeah. I was distracted by Lois over oh, there. Okay. Did you meet Dick Clark? Oh, yes. Yeah. Dick Clark was very busy. He was always talking on the phone at the podium and nobody knew who he was talking to but who was he talking to? he was talking to the director that was i believe it was the, the director i think his name was ed yates i think he was the producer or the director he so was he was getting cues control, for the next section control yeah. room and yes. he was they, they were making up last minute updates way before they had earpieces right exactly yeah, exactly that's so that's great. how he communicated with the control room what a nice guy huh yes he was very nice yeah and I did meet him. Uh, my dad wrote for a newspaper in Philadelphia and interviewed Dick Clark. And I met Dick Clark in 1997. Uh, I believe it was for the um, 40th anniversary at the Bandstand Grill that was at the King of Prussia. And at that time, I walked up to him and showed him the picture of him with my dad. And he said he kind of remembered my dad and he remembered that suit he was wearing. It's a white uh, suit. And he signed the picture for me. And I have it in my uh, computer room. Okay, and onward to today. What are you doing today? Today I'm the president. I, I became the president of the Dovells fan club and also the president of Larry Chance and the Earls fan club and also the president of Kenny Jeremiah who was one of the sole survivors. I help him and I help somebody named Philly Cuz on his Facebook page. Uh, group page. Wow, that's so really busy amazing. Doing that. Well, thanks for staying active in it, and uh, thanks for coming out to uh, uh, the Luau at Lois's place. And uh, you know, now I'm going to have to go find Lois and, and see, know. you know, if she'll sit down with us for a couple minutes and chat. Okay. But uh, thanks Thank for coming you. out. Thank you. Thank you. I really enjoyed your. And so the barbecue is cooking, Lois, and the, and the Luau is going great. And you're fresh off of an amazing show yes. at the, the Candlelight Theater. Yes. Um, you know, so Emil Stucchio, the classics. We even had a special with uh, with uh, uh, Rick Shepard. He got up with the, with the uh, and and sang. You know, so you know, tell me, what a great night. We really oh, got some great wonderful. interviews that night, didn't yes, we? Yes, wonderful. Yeah, what a great crowd, sellout mm -hmm. crowd. So you're basking in the glory of another victory, huh? Unbelievable. Because Lou Ray Productions, that's how you do it. You can get over here and spend some time with Lois every month right come to right. come to come to brunch with lois we, you'll see yourself on tv you'll probably <laughs> be on tv and so you know it's a really special thing i'm real i'm really thankful for my our relationship with you lois and uh so what's going on today what do you got why the uh, luau theme jimmy come on down jimmy's out jimmy's here who's jimmy jimmy d wvlt jimmy jimmy d let's let's get jimmy in here do you here want to get jimmy me. in here let's go Absolutely. All right. come on oh, over man. here between two gorgeous men of wow. course of course we have room wow. how are you jimmy how are you scott Susi with positive promotions scott how are you i'm doing terrific absolutely terrific happy to be at lois once again yes it's, for the, it's, it's, it's wonderful yeah. absolutely barbecue going on here you got laid absolutely and <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, right? <laughs> so for those those who don't know, yes. what's your official capacity? I am the on-air morning 
guy at WVLT. It's cruising 92.1. And we also have a couple internet stations, which are phillygoldradio.com and philliesjamandoldies.com. So you're with Lou? I'm with Lou Costello, you yes. mean? Oh, him. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Lou. Actually, actually, Jimmy fills in for Lou Ray when Lou can't be there. Yes, oh, yes, yes, absolutely. So, so you, you, how, I mean, how, many, how many months have you been coming to this? Is, it, is this your first? or no. This will be the second. It's yeah. your second? Two in a row. Exactly okay. right. Yes. So, so who, I mean, it's just an amazing thing Lois has going here. It's crazy. It is. It's wonderful. I mean, it's, it's so nice of her to do it every month, you know, on a monthly basis, too, year-round. That's that's the strength. That's the uh, you know that that attitude that you have. That never give up. That amazing uh, sellout type of deal at Lou Ray Productions. I mean, it's an it's an amazing thing. What's coming up next for Lou Ray Productions? Uh, Bobby Vinton, September twenty seventh at the Grand. Then New Year's Eve again, a candlelight with the Jersey Four. They sold out in two days last year. So if you want tickets, they will go on sale September first. Get them for early because they won't last. And then after that, we have, I'm going to get lost here, mm -hmm. Kenny Vance's son, Lad Vance, um, Rick Shepard's Drifters, oh gosh, <laughs> who? Kid, Kid Kyle, Kyle. Kid, Kyle. Kid Kyle, oh, the Danny juniors. and the Juniors, Okay. Bonnie's group. Who's over here off camera helping us? Oh, uh, we have Ray. Ray, thanks for helping Dixie. us out, Ray. Okay. Who came early, thank God, and she's been a great help. Yeah. And so you get better and better at this every time we're on TV, Lois. It uh, seems like you're starting to relax a little bit. Is that true? You feeling a little more comfortable? Well, you throw a microphone and camera in front of me all the time, so <laughs> it's, it's big, uh, it. yeah, it's like living and breathing and everyday stuff. Yeah. Well, it's Lou Ray Productions. Uh, it's it's the it's brunch with Lois. It's lunch with Lois. It's today. It's a luau, and everyone's getting laid, and it's a great time. And let's. Uh, ooh, somebody else is off camera. They're they're doing Bonnie, some kind. Look what she Bonnie, has what do you got over there? I found this in my pocketbook. In your pocketbook. Wow, look at that. It's a picture. Wow, we're gonna get we're gonna get a picture. So it's a picture of Bonnie on bandstand, and uh, wow, that's a really special piece of history. And thank you very much for sharing that with us, Bonnie. Great. All right, let's get back to the luau. If you want to get over here, just get over here and enjoy these great events with Lois, monthly basis. Uh, where can people, you know, visit your webpage to find out about the events? Uh, how can they get involved with this monthly activity? Okay, Lou Ray Productions, LLC.com is my webpage. To get invited to the brunch, you need to send me an email and ask to go on the list. And that's lululipton at yahoo.com. And that is on my website, but I don't put the brunches on the website. First Saturday of every month at 11.30. And Rachel and Lou from South Africa are here. Hi. Hey, what's up, Rachel and Lou? How are you? <laughs> We've got an international. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hand it over to a radio guy to sign us off. Thank you so much, Lois. I appreciate it. Thank Ready? You. Are you in three, two, one? Take it away. Absolutely. Always a pleasure to be with Lois and you and everyone here at Lou Ray Productions. Part of the show, part of the, the entire thing. It's just wonderful. And, and? and check me out weekday morning, 6 to 10 a.m., cruising 92.1 worldwide, WVLT.com. Let, can, that's a wrap. Can we oh, wait, spend wait, wait. five minutes with Gina, who has tried every month to get interviewed? Gina? She's a Nashville recording star. Nashville recording very star? close friend of mine. Can if you're start? telling me to go to her, we'll go to her five next. Five minutes. That's it. And we're coming off the food, and we're coming back to Gina Miller. How are you, Gina? I'm wonderful. How are you? And what do, what do you do? Are you a Nashville recording artist, I hear? I'm a singer-songwriter, and I've recorded my uh, debut album in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. Uh, What's the name of the album? It's called Faded Footprints. It was produced uh, by John Stecker. He passed away last summer from cancer. Oh, gosh. That's sad. Well, let's change it over to a more positive okay. note. Right? What's your favorite song on the, on the album? I don't know. I like them all. <laughs> you like them all, huh? You just can't pick one. No. But if people wanted to get involved and buy it, where do they go? Um, they could go to my website at www.ginasong.com. Okay. And uh, any emails or any of that stuff you want to give out or no? It's all. I have a contact form right through the email. Gotcha. What was the, what was the most interesting part about recording your album in Nashville? Um, we were actually, John and I were approached by one of the members of the National EMS uh, board members, National Emergency Medical Services, to write a tribute song. 
So we did. We uh, actually wrote a song called The Tree of Life. It was to honor the unsung heroes that died in the line of duty in the EMS field. Okay. Um, and we have, we, it was actually played at several, a lot of memorial services across the country, and we sang it at the National EMS Memorial Service. Well, I can't wait to hear that. You know, that sounds like a really great one. And uh, so, you know, how long have you been in music? How long have you been interested in music? How long have you been doing this? Since I was little, I like to sing, but I actually got serious with the songwriting probably in about 2004. Um, Linda Davis is, uh, uh, she sang with Reba McIntyre for years, and she's a really good friend of mine. She's been very encouraging, inspiring all along the way. Oh, that's really great. I can't wait to hear you sing. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, another another added benefit of hanging around with Lois and, uh, you know, you meeting great people like you. But uh, now we're going to head over to Candlelight. We're going to check out some really great interviews over there. Jimmy. Over here, we're over here. I got Patsy Klein over here. Nope. We got one more. <laughs> what, what, what are you? Who, who are you? What are you doing? My name is Susan Hornung, and I'm playing Louise Sager in this summer's two-woman production of Always Patsy Klein at Always the Candlelight Patsy. Theater. At the Candlelight Theater. What, when are the days, and where where can they go to get the information? We're opening July the 11th, and it runs through August 24th. Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. Even Patsy Klein shows up to these things. It's great. Lunch with Lois. Get here. Lou Ray Productions. Rick Shepard, Tony, the Drifters. Yes, sir. This is a special moment for me. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for appearing on uh, Newcastle County TV and, you know, focusing on the arts uh -huh. and how important it is. Right. And what, the, what, does, what does it mean to you guys? I mean, we understand what the Drifters, who the Drifters are, what, what has happened with the Drifters over the years. But with the arts, how do the arts influence you? How do the arts influence your career? Well, I started out as a young kid, nine years old, singing, and I started, uh, my mother used to listen to Bing Crosby all the time, so I started sounding like Bing Crosby. I used to do the, and the Catholic uh, church on the weekends, they had the little shows, and then the bar mitzvahs, and then I was singing, because of you, and they said, this little black kid sound like Bing Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> so I started singing professionally on TV when I was nine years old. Nine years old. Wow, that's really I special. I with uh, Sam and Davis when I was 19. How was that? <laughs> that was great uh, in Miami, Florida. Wow, that was real special. Sammy, my gosh. Right. <laughs> you know, I can, I can remember as a kid, you know, his influence on me. I mean, that's really special. And what, what do you think was your major influence that you got from Sammy? Well, dancing, he told me, he says, uh, I had it in me. Well, in my family, you know, we have entertainers, cops, and real estate. Eartha Kitt was my mother's first cousin. So we had always had show business. And I um, listened to him and Frank Sinatra when we used to open the show for, for him down in Miami. And uh, he told me, just remember one thing. When you go out there, they don't want to know about you had a headache or you were sick. You just do the show. <laughs> and that's part of the stage presence, right? That's and that's part of that, that, that art that uh, you may not be having the best day. That's you right. may have just come off a beat. That's right. They and so they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. But uh, Tony... What about you? How did it influence you, and, and how do you translate the, that to your performances on stage? Well, actually, I started as a young man also performing with a lot of different artists, and I was fortunate to meet Arthur Prysock and a few other people at a young age, and they just influenced me to keep on doing what I was doing. So then I, at an early age, I was introduced to the Drifters, and I haven't left since. I'm very fortunate. That's really special. Well, tell me about your favorite. What's a favorite moment for you with the Drifters? My favorite moment? You know what it is? I just enjoy performing with the Drifters. I enjoy performing live and having fun and making people smile. That's really what it's all about to me. Just seeing people smile and enjoy themselves, that brings something to my heart. So I'm just fortunate to be a part of a great organization, the Drifters. Looking forward to continuing as long as I can breathe. That's really <laughs> great stuff. Tony, thanks. Rick, really, Thank what you. a pleasure. Thank you very Blessed, much. honored. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Here's a special one. This is Lou Costello. 92.9? 92.1. 1. 92.1 FM. FM every day, 10 to 1. This is amazing. This is, a good, this is a great one for me because Lou did such a nice job at the Grand Opera House, and that was a special night. Thank it you really very much. was. I enjoyed it very much. I love the Grand Opera House, and Lois puts on a good show. She picks the right acts, and everything comes together, and we've got a, we got a rock and roll show that the guests love. Yeah, that really is special. It works well. Yeah. That, that, who is, who's your favorite artist? You know, Scott, I have been had the, the, the pleasure of working with so many that it, 
the gentleman who became my friend and I really had a nice association with is no longer with us, and that was the great Johnny Maestro. John and I were buddies, and uh, we worked together as often as we could with his schedule and my schedule. But um, I honestly, I have so many, it would take a long, long list. I've just been very fortunate, blessed by the good Lord, to work with so many acts. And uh, this gentleman out here tonight, Emil Stucco in the classics, many times we've worked together. He's a wonderful talent, he's got a great voice, keeps himself in good shape and puts on a wonderful show. So they're, they're all my favorites. Yeah, they're that, all my favorites. And, yes. and uh, Lois brings them here. I mean, this is, a, this is an, an Atlantic City style type of show. And it's here, and it's in Wilmington, and it's, and it's such a great venue, the Candlelight Theater. So, you know, more of this should be happening. These guys are amazing. So get, give me your top three. Come on, Lou. I know I don't oh, want you to offend anyone. Yeah, with? come on. Uh, well, Johnny and the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, Jimmy Beaumont and the Skyliners, and uh, boy, oh boy, this is tough, Scott. I'm, if I don't know who's going to see this, but I'm probably going to get in trouble because they're going to say, "Lou, you forgot me." Um, the Jimmy Beaumont and the Skyliners, and uh, probably uh, going way back, my old pal uh, Willie Winfield and the Harp Tones. Interesting. And then number five and or number four and five, if I can throw it in, two dear personal friends of mine for over 40 years, Lenny Welch and Mel Carter. How did you get up five? How did you get into the radio business? Uh, quite by accident, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, I always wanted to do it. I was one of those kids that had the little transistor radio under my pillow. My mother would say, "You didn't do your homework. I'm taking that away. You got to go to sleep. You got school tomorrow." You know that type of thing. And I listened to the Philadelphia guys, Joe Niagara. Uh, High Lit, Georgie Woods, all of the famous Philly guys. And I said, you know, I, 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 I want to do this. But honestly, as I became an adult and went into the corporate world and started working, I, I never really thought an opportunity would come along. I did mobile DJ work, and I did some public speaking, uh, which I truly enjoyed both of those. And uh, then one day, um, a buddy of mine said, you know, there's a station radio station in Vineland, and if you want to, you can buy time and have your own show. I went, this is too good to be true. So he took me down there and he introduced me, and he and I together started a show called the Saturday Night Jukebox. And that was on Saturday nights. We did a big, a long show. It was 6 to midnight. <laughs> long show. But uh, we, we switched off and on. He'd do a couple of hours, then take a break. I'd do a couple of hours. And uh, that was over 20 years ago. And uh, finally, when I decided I'd had enough of the other, the suit and tie stuff, and uh, I had created a Wednesday night show called the Doo-Wop Diner, which I do every Wednesday night from 7 to 9. And I told the uh, general manager one day, I said, you know, if an opportunity comes along for a daytime slot, I'd like to be considered. He said, okay, fine. This was years ago. And uh, it wasn't a week, Scott. So this poor guy put his foot in his mouth and he got canned. And I mean, he really put his foot in his mouth. There was no helping him out. He had to go. And um, he got canned and the boss called me up. He said, hey, you want to be on from 10 to 1 every day? And I said, uh, are you going to pay me? He goes, absolutely. He said, uh, can you start tomorrow? I went, yep, I could start tomorrow. And we were off to the races and uh, here we are. Here we are today. Yeah. It's turned out very well. Um, once again, I'm, I'm blessed to have... Uh, the ratings-wise, the number one show on the station, um, and the boss keeps uh, reminding me that uh, I get the most emails and the most texts and all that kind of stuff. But he waits to tell me because he said he doesn't want me to get a, he doesn't want me to get a big hit. And I tell him I said it's too late for that. <laughs> I said, it's too late. But uh, it's it's a great gig, and because of that gig, things like this happen. I get to meet great folks like you, and uh, and and become friends with guys like Emil, and and it's just. I, I sometimes still think I'm dreaming. Somebody's going to pinch me and wake me up. But it's not going to be me. But uh, <laughs> Lou, thank you so much for appearing yeah, on Newcastle pleasure. County TV. We really appreciate it. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for telling us about everything that you've gone through to get to where you're at. Listen, and, this uh, is a wonderful sleeping giant. We have is. a great fan base in really Delaware, is. Wilmington, and what's nice about it is they're very supportive. Mm -hmm. To sell out the Grand Opera, she's done it three times in a row. Yeah, fourth that's, is coming up soon. That's not an e that's not an easy task. And 
That'll, that tells you about the folks in Delaware. They love this music, they support this music, and because of that, entertainers like us love the folks in Delaware. Yeah, I'm looking for Lois, Lois Lipton Parker. Hmm, Lois Lipton Parker with Lou Ray Productions. Look, she's working. She's never, she never stops working. She never stops promoting. What's the next event? I mean, tonight is a great night. The Candlelight Theater, Emil Stuccio and the Classics. This is a beautiful show with, with, with Late for Dinner. What, what's coming up next? I mean, you've got a whole list of Bobby shows coming up. Vinton, Bobby Vinton at the Grand Opera House, September 27th. Okay, where do they call if they want those tickets? They call the Grand, 652-5577. What's your name? My name? Uh, Lois, she forgot her name. Lois Lipton Parker. <laughs> she is one of the founding members of uh, Lou Ray Productions, right? I Where's the founding she's the, You're the founding member of Lou Ray Productions. Where, what is your webpage? If people want to enjoy Bobby Vinton, where do they go? Lou Ray Productions, LLC.com. Lou Ray Productions, LLC.com. Another great show, Lo. I really appreciate it. Thank you for including us. We really appreciate well, it. You're pointing at something. What do you want me to say? December 31st, New Year's Eve, back by popular demand, is going to be the Jersey Four right here at Candlelight. And last year we sold out a month in advance, and we had a long waiting list. So if you want to come for New Year's Eve and see the Jersey Four again, Get your tickets really early. Well, who's next? Well, they should probably go on sale around September. Okay, I have September. to get through a few other shows first. Okay. Then April 25th. Okay, here we go. This is the big one, everyone. This is the big one. Listen up. April 25th at the Grand Opera House, we have Jimmy Clanton, Danny and the Juniors, the Chicklets, the Times, Lad Vance, who is Kenny Vance's son, and I'm hoping and praying that somehow Kenny will be well enough to maybe come up and join that for a song, but that's a far-fetched thing. Who knows? And Rick Shepard's Drifters. Well, we just interviewed Rick, and we just yeah. interviewed the most important person in the house. Lois, thank you very much for having us, and uh, I just can't wait for the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jimmy, over here. We're going to close the show out. Jimmy, over here. Jimmy, hey, listen, that's a wrap from Lois's. We've got a great luau going on here, and I need to get some food. Jimmy's hungry. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for watching the show. We'll see you next time.